Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you 100 tips and tricks, or probably less because I do not count these, for Cyanogen Mod 11. So, the first tip what you can do is if your phone has capacitive or hardware keys, what you can do, go into the app drawer, go into settings, scroll down to buttons. Click on Enable On Screen Nav Bar. Once you enable this, it'll enable the soft keys, and you can navigate using them. You can disable it just as easily by going back into Settings, and then disabling it by turning off Enable On Screen Nav Bar. The other tip is that if you go into the Settings, scroll down to Battery. Click on this little trash bin and it'll reset all the stats for your battery. Another tip is you can go into profiles. Now what you're gonna do, do not click any one of these. Let's stay keep it on default. What you're gonna do, you're gonna go down here, press the press the little plus button you see down there. Click it. And you can basically add anything you want to this. You can just Add a profile in general. And as you can see, you can set up different actions on the phone, or you can set up different actions that the profile does on your phone. And once you finish, so let me scroll down. Go to finish. It's a new profile. Now, once you click on the profile, It'll set to the will you shut the f now once you click on the profile it'll set well it doesn't set for me for some reason I don't really know why. Another thing is that if you go into settings scroll down to performance now proceed with caution. Oh, don't click on it. There are different profiles. You can click on power save, balanced, and performance. There are also profiles for this. If you scroll down here, go over here. You can see you can switch it from performance to power save to balanced. It comes with the built in kernel, so it's really nice. But you can do it in detail if you really want to by going into the performance menu and settings where it's located is all the way down next to about phone and super user so you click on performance. Go to processor you can set it here you can set all of these settings. The CPU governor I'm not really sure what these what most of these do but I'm pretty sure I know what some of them do. Interactive is when you interact with the phone, it switches the CPU clock speed like every single few seconds or every single second. The rest of these settings basically restore this, this restores the applied settings on boot, and these you can vary to make it you know. Memory management this basically. Some of them are supposed to make it fast. I'm not really sure what these both do, but they are in the performance menu, so. IO scheduler, no, I've never heard of this before, but I'm gonna guess an IO scheduler is basically like some type of thing on this, on the motherboard. I am sorry, it is 9.38, I am tired as hell. Anyways, so how to set the date and time exactly? If you connect to your own Wi-Fi, it'll automatically set the date and time that your, wi that your internet service provider has been set on your router. But if you want to do it manually, what you have to do is scroll down to date and time check off automatic date and time and then select your time to whatever you need it to be 
and your date too if it's off like 1970 or something you can also choose the 24 hour format I don't I never really use this but you could use it if you really want to You also choose the date format, so I don't really use any of these. I just keep it at its default, but you can select any th any four of these if you really want. Another thing you can do, go into settings, scroll down to status bar. Once you're, I'm so sorry. Once you're on status bar, go to battery status style. You can select from any one of these. So for example, portrait, which I already have activated. You can also show the battery percentage. You can't really see it. Let me zoom in on that really quick. Shows the battery percentage right there if I turn it off. Oh no, if I turn it off, you can't really see it anymore. You can also do a landscape icon, which takes up a bit more space, so I don't really use it. You can also set the battery percentage of that. Now, there's one that always shows the battery percentage, which is one called text, and I don't use this one because it just does not look good. It does not, it does not look nice, in my opinion. You can also hide it, but I don't think it's healthy, so um, and you can also choose circle, which can show the battery percentage also. But I like keeping it stock sometimes, so I'm just gonna go back to portrait. Another thing you can do with this with the Cyanogen Mod 11 is brightness control. So basically you turn on brightness control you can adjust the brightness by sliding across the status bar like this, for example. Oh, I'm sorry. And you can see it got brighter. But when I do this, oh, I'm so sorry, it gets dimmer. And you can toggle that off if you don't really need it, but yeah. He also show the notification count, display the number of pending notifications. I don't know if that's gonna take I don't know if that's gonna take up too much uh notification space in in the status bar, but yeah. It's it's on so I just keep it on. Oh my god, I'm so stupid, I didn't even notice this. You can change the clock style, you can hide it. You can put it in the center which I honestly only use on big phones. And the default, which is over here. You can't put it on the left, though, and I don't know why. So, guys, you see how I mapped the menu button to be the recent apps button? And hold this down. It does absolutely nothing. Oh, it didn't go home, obviously. I went into settings. Scroll down into buttons. Map the home button to do no action. Double tap action launches the camera, but I don't really use that that much. I made the menu button the recent app switcher. And the long press open close instead. And the volume buttons do the exact same thing. I don't really use them. Sorry if my voice sounds raspy. I'm just really tired. And uh, you can also... Enable the illumination for the capacitive keys. So, so, for example, if I set one second, one second. Now, if I set it for like seven seconds, it'll be seven seconds. You can also just turn it off in general, but I'm not really sure if anyone likes that, so I'm just going to keep it on and put it back to two seconds. A security trick is if you go into settings, go down to lock screen, screen security, 
set your screen lock. So, for example, we're going to go pin. All right, I'm going to take this out, guys. So, once you set your screen lock, what you can do is go is select these. So, power button instantly locks. You can just select that, and the power button will instantly lock. Now, if you wait five seconds after sleep, one, two, three, four, five, six, it will automatically lock itself. Now, there are some cool options that I found. So, basically, you can press quick unlock. So, for example, wait, let's wait, let's wait. So, for example, when you unlock it, instead of having to press the enter key, it automatically unlocks the phone. There's another one, too. Scramble layout. Scramble pin layout when, unlock, when unlocking device. So, for example, when I shut the phone off and then turn it back on, it'll scramble it every single time. So, for example... Okay, so you see this. As you can see, it scrambles it. Now you can also set this setting where it maximizes the widgets when the screen is turned on. So for example, let me turn the screen off. Turn it back on. You'll see that there's this little lock thing, but it shows the widget. So if you click on this lock, you can put in your pin. You can also add the camera widget, but I'm not really gonna talk about that because it's a waste of time. Anyways, if you have any launchers downloaded, you can go to home and set it as the default launcher. So when you go down, you know, oh, you can also click on the launcher settings, but yeah. And as you can see, hollow launcher is running. So it runs per perfectly smooth, perfectly fine, works just well. As you can see, literally no buffering, no frame buffers at all, because Android Kick is buttery smooth, even though Jelly Bean was supposed to be buttery smooth. And you can switch it back to the stock trip budget launcher whenever you want to. Like, just like that, in a snap of a finger. can also do this, so, wait, no one, there's this feature I found where, scroll down the sound, you can find charging sounds, so for example, when you plug in your phone or disconnect your phone, it'll play that notification sound that you set, I honestly don't prefer the vibrate option because it just throws me off. And I just like the pure sound instead. And as you can see, I used... Hold on. And as you can see, I used Electra for that. God, that's a bit... That's ear piercing. Hold on. Used Electra for that. Because I honestly think that the notification sound is beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, 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 wait. You can also change the physical vibrator de intensity. That that actually sounded really sus. Hold on. You can change the uh, intensity of the rumble. So basically. Oh. 
You can feel that one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> mm. That's 100. That's 50. That's 2. That's 100. Now, this does say that values higher than 75 are not recommended, so I'd rather just keep it at, like, the, the minimum, the bare minimum. A few more features I wanted to tell you about was if you go into developer options. What is this? Oh, no, never mind. If you go into developer options, scroll down. Why do I have that on? Oh, no. Don't have those on. Please. You go to here. Instead of having little select boxes, you can actually select your own customized window animation scale. And let me have mine slow because I like animations. So we're just gonna. Now you can set yours to however you like them, but I personally like mine really slow. Another one I want to tell you about was Super User. So, yes, this ROM comes with built in Super User. I don't know how I how it does, but it does, and I'm actually happy with that because I normally use exposed uh that build prop editor and a CPU booster. And since it's built in, it actually gives you a prompt, which is nice. And another thing, you can go over here, I think and see the logs if you could fuck <laughs> if you can fucking i think you can also go up here settings yeah i'm gonna set the super user access to disabled apps only adb only apps and adb but i don't know, we just have it on like apps only I can select declared permission only allow requests from apps that declare Android dot permission dot access underscore super user. I don't really understand the point of that. I mean, come on, it doesn't make any sense. You can also set the request timeout, but I normally have it at the max because I'm my reaction time is really slow. You can also enable all super user request logging, which logs the requests kind of like if you go into here you'll see the you'll see it now the thing i wanted to show you is actually an easter egg hold on go to about phone don't click on the android version do not click on that click on the cyanogen mod version now to come up with this c um click it until it does that bam you got an Easter egg. And especially if you go into here, the dessert case will have the cyanogen mod icons. Wait, why is this actually kind of fire? Why is this actually kind of fun? Thing I like about this is that since it's KitKat and KitKat was Project Svelte, which made devices under 512 megabytes of RAM run really smooth. I love that about KitKat, even though it kind of doesn't work on my Motorola Zoom, but yeah, it works really well in here, and it's really smooth. This has 780 megabytes of RAM. I don't know how many, how much gigahertz it's clocked to. Let me check if I can check. I think I need to go into process. Yeah, um, that, whatever the fuck. And it still runs really smooth. Even under power save mode, it's still bearable. I mean, it runs. I mean, the scrolling's still smooth in power saving mode.
I'm not actually even in a power saving mode or is this shit fucking fake because it's obviously um, performance mode that I'm on right now. It's going to be less choppy and more smooth. I mean, it's going through home screens. There's going to be less graininess. Power saving? What the fuck? I'll go with the fuck. Why is there still... It's the same thing on all of them. What the fuck? You can use performance mode for certain games like... Um, hold on. For certain games like Geometry Dash, for example. Because you can see it runs perfectly fine. As long as you don't select really high end levels, because then your phone's probably gonna fucking explode and uh, explode into into minor peak. Let's test gaming on power saving mode. I swear to God, if this is the same thing. What the fuck? It's the same thing. What the? Well, they're all the same thing, guys. I just realized that. Um... Also, another thing I learned from this ROM was apparently, if you go into Apollo, I think, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I made the soft keys illuminate, like they illuminate to the beat, so like, like it flickered on and off, so I did something. I don't know how I did it though. Let me check if I can actually find it really quick. Yeah, I can't really find that. Calendar works fine. Wait, what? Oh, no way. February 20th. Wait. It's February 24th. Wait. I think these changes come on reboot. I think... I'm not going to check right now. The Play Store loads just fine. There are actually flashed gaps. I tried flashing the exact same arm gaps onto my uh, Zoom 4.4, but for some reason they didn't work. It just keeps saying Google Play Services has stopped. Google Play Services has Google Play Store has Google Play Cert. And it's really annoying. As you can see, most apps are supported still. So, for example, you can download TikTok, WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, Ibis Paint X, uh, Crossword Quest, Bow Shooters, Solitaire. Even though literally nobody fucking plays Solitaire, uh, Block Puzzle, Galaxy Shooter, and a bunch of other different games. Basically, the only fucking YouTube that still works on you. This is literally the only YouTube that works on KCAT. I mean, like, come on. What the fuck? Even worse. YT Music is also another one that's supported by KitKat. YouTube used to be supported by KitKat. I mean, I remember that, like, a year ago.
when I got the old Metro Z Max to work, and I watched YouTube on it. Can you believe that? I watched YouTube on it, and I also had premium back then, so I downloaded the video. But YouTube worked just fine, and I don't understand why it does not work now. Maybe they deprecated it. Maybe back then, Andrew KitKat still had some support left. I don't know. We'll never know. But yeah, um, there's also this terminal emulator you can open up. I'm not really sure what to do with it, though. I mean, like, if I do ADB shell... Oh! Okay, never mind, this thing actually works. Well, yeah. And another thing I wanted to show you. Another thing I wanted to show you guys was uh, a really cool feature. So look, wait, what the fuck? If I go into the camera, go in here. Here's some what the fuck. Ugh. No, 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 shut the fuck up. No, I don't think it was in the camera. Oh, look how okay, I'm sure. Oh, another thing I found in Science Mods, you can infinitely resize widgets. I don't see like my widget small. But you can keep them big if you want. I mean, it's not my choice, it's yours. And yeah, I basically only use this device for non daily stuff because. I mean, why would you want to use a. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, A 10 or 11 year old. 9 to 10 year old device. That used to run Jelly Bean, running KitKat, that still isn't even supported by most applications anyway. I mean, I might as well just stay on stock of Jelly Bean. But, yeah, I mean, I still kind of like it. I mean, it's kind of smooth. It's not jaggedy. Some apps are still supported, like YouTube Music. Oh, wait, I just realized if I spin it around, it's still in a perfect circle. Oh, my God. I did not fucking know that. One more thing that I wanted to point out. Um, Sanger Mod came in with a came, comes with a built-in file manager. But uh, Will that toilet Oh Will the toilet shut the fuck up, please. I swear to fucking god, bro. You done? Okay. Like I was saying. The Cyanogen mod comes with a built well the Cyanogen mod around comes with a built in file manager, which is actually kinda nice if I want to browse some files, for example. It's smooth, it's not jaggedy, it's fast. You can you can oh no. Well I mean You can't really go back. I mean, well, yeah, you can't. Can't go back. You can't like read. Yeah, I can't read. You can't uh, go to the system uh, part from at least what I know in this file manager.
Yeah. Anyways, it's probably my longest video I've uploaded in a while, but hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and uh, peace out, guys.